Extends opposed to the Takitai Moana Bill, just as we opposed the Foreshore and Seabed Bill in 2004. In the case of the former now existing Act, we were outraged at the decision to treat Māori as second-class citizens by denying them the chance to have their property rights tested in court. The previous law did not take the entire foreshore and seabed off Māori, as some claim, including those in the Māori Party, or at least some of them. But it did deny Māori the right to go to court, and that was travesty enough. But you do not, involve, do not resolve one injustice by creating another, Mr Speaker, and this bill does precisely that. National is overreacting, just as Labor did in 2004. The solution, Mr Speaker, in our view is deceptively simple, and that is restore the situation to what it was before the 2004 Act was passed. The Ngāti Upper decision decided that Iwi had the right to go to the Maori Land Court and seek freehold title of limited areas of the foreshore and seabed. What it also said, and this is important, is that the chances of gaining such title was not very high. The exact quote was, any customary property in the areas vested seem unlikely to survive. Close quote. And this is where I believe the Māori Party and certain iwi leaders have an objection to just repealing the current law without replacing it. The odds of iwi gaining more than a few tracts of foreshore and seabed without legislative intervention would be slim. Thus, the Foreshore and Seabed Act was not the largest land grab in New Zealand history, as some have hysterically proclaimed it. That, sadly, was, happened in the 1860s after the so-called Maori Wars and the illegal confiscations of land which followed. The Attorney General has said publicly that up to 10%, 2,000 kilometres of coastline, could end up in iwi hands. The only reason we will likely lose 2,000 kilometres of coastline and the resources that go with it to a few elite Māori is because Mr Finlayson has decided this in conjunction with those who stand to profit. That is the biggest problem with this bill, Mr Speaker, letting iwi negotiate with the government directly, which will result in purely political outcomes and create new injustices. Why, as Mr Finlayson has said, go through the court process when the government has already said that he will provide a better outcome. If an iwi goes to the High Court and is awarded customary title over areas of the foreshore and seabed, Act is completely comfortable with that decision. I'll say that again. If an iwi was to go to the High Court and be awarded customary title over an area of the foreshore and seabed, we are completely comfortable with that. But if behind closed doors, over here in the Beehive, the government gives away an area of foreshore and seabed. No one with an interest in democracy should welcome that. As I have said before, if National can gain a political advantage from giving away large tracts of foreshore and seabed, they'll do it. Their track record, indeed this very bill, is proof that politics comes before what's right. Well, Mr Speaker, the bad news for the National Party is that this bill might buy them a few months of peace from the Māori Party, but they're in for no end of grief. And I'll put on record here, Mr Speaker, that Mr. Mrs Turia and Mr Sharples and certainly Mr Harawera uh, responded that they agreed with those on the other side who said that this will be an endless revisiting process and not a full and final settlement or a full and final legislative resolution at all. Mr Speaker, last week I asked the Attorney General where in the legislation before this House it says public access will be free. He helpfully pointed it to clauses 27, 60, 63 and 64. Well, that worked as a fob off here in the House because I didn't have the legislation with me. But when I read those clauses carefully, I never saw the word free or the phrase charging for public access is prohibited in any of those clauses. Section or clause 27, for instance, says that any individual has the right to enter stay on and leave what is now called the common marine and coastal area. But I ponder, Mr Speaker, what is so hard to insert the simple words for free in there? Who or what is stopping Mr Finlayson from doing so? I also asked Mr Finlayson whether it would be an offence to charge for public access. 
It took three points of order and the intervention of Mr Speaker before he admitted, quote, it could be an offence, it depends on the circumstances, close quote. So all we have to go on, Mr Speaker, is the constantly changing word of the Attorney-General. While this bill does give him great power, in its current form he cannot necessarily stop Iwi from charging for access, and he should say so. And it's a bit rich of Mrs Tyria and others to say that won't happen. It's happening now, Mrs Tyria, and you know it. At the public meetings I held recently in Northland, I didn't have to, I'll give those, I'll give some, I'll give some. I didn't have to, quote, search high and low, close quote, for people who'd been denied access, as Mrs Terrier claimed. They came to me, Mr Speaker. One man was ordered to, quote, get down to the Pakia end of the beach, close quote. A newly married couple were told by Iwi members to pay in exchange for allowing the picturesque backdrop of a pretty bay to be used for their wedding photos. The mayor of the far north and his wife told me they have been told to get off the beach in rather more direct language a number of times. It's happening now on beaches uh, that have no customary title. What makes anyone think that that's going to stop when this bill is passed? There is no doubt, Mr Speaker, that those same leaders who made a meal out of the supposed meaningless phrase in the State-Owned Enterprises Act 1987 are looking at the word tikanga and seeing big dollar signs. That word is in this bill 26 times and is defined, uh, I use that word loosely, as, quote, Māori customary values and practices, close quote. This extremely vague term gives iwi open licence to ignore the Resource Management Act, exclude people from customary title areas, and have the sole right to make millions, possibly billions, out of any resources on that land. Now, if Maori profit from minerals on land awarded to them by the High Court, that's no problem. I'll say that again. If Māori profit from minerals, whether on land or on sea, awarded to them by the High Court, that's no problem. But, not, but that's not what's going to happen, Mr Speaker. Instead, grubby deals will be done behind closed doors up in the beehive. This bill is deliberately poorly drafted and loopholes failing to guarantee free access to beaches will be exploited unless closed. Nothing is surer than that. I urge the public to put their submissions in as soon as possible and ask that the phrase charging the public for access is prohibited is inserted in the law, just as it was quite deliberately in a kind of section that lawyers call a belt and braces section, section 40 of the Foreshore and Seabed Act 2004. Mr Speaker, under rules of statutory interpretation, a judge will eventually say that an omission of an equivalent section in this legislation is not an accident. Mr Speaker, we should also be seeking a clear definition of tikanga. Mr Finlayson told us today in answer to questions that, they, that the meaning may vary from iwi to iwi and hapu to hapu. Ultimately, of course, the power to award customary titles should be taken away from the government and given solely to the judiciary in the form of the High Court where it belongs. In repealing and replacing one injustice, we are on the verge of creating many, many more. And that is why the ACT Party so strongly opposes this bill on behalf of the many thousands of New Zealanders who share our concerns. Thank you.